What's up everybody, this is Carrick with ACG and it's my continuing mission to bring you videos that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Today we're taking a look at Psychonauts the Rhombus of Ruin from Double Fine that has you leaping Lenny Poffo style into the brains of a group of Professor X's that just went basically batshit insane. And that is the most normal part of the game. Rhombus is out now for $19.99 and is a PSVR only title. So let's see if Double Fine can pull off a Capcom bringing in one of their known IPs into the VR sphere without a ton of issues. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Psychonauts The Rhombus of Ruin, underwater school buses, the hilarity of kids and IEDs, and the horror of airplane bathrooms. Graphics are up first. You know, if there's one thing that Double Fine is actually known for, it's that suitably adult cartoony sweet, but maybe shows up in your nightmares from time to time art aesthetic, and we have it here. Continuing on the general broad strokes set down in the prior platformer title, Rhombus alters them just slightly to work in VR format, but overall they nailed this as a brief bridge between the original title and Double Fine's expected sequel. It really doesn't matter if you're exploring someone's mind's eye recreation of deep sea battles with balloon duck ballistics to time spent looking in on family problems in the world's scariest pseudo animatronic dollhouse. Rhombus absolutely hits the mark with its bent and slightly twisted style that they are so known for. Also, kudos to them for getting the sense of presence done so well. While not up to the I need pampers moments of Resident Evil with folks invading your face space, Rhombus is a slightly more sedate affair, but don't think for a second that sometimes someone's not going to get too close for comfort. Technically, while the game looks better than this footage due to recording the typical PSVR social screen, it does see the slight drop in resolution and overall fidelity that I think we all expect from a VR title to get it running at the proper frame rate. That being said, Double Fine have worked around that for the most part, using subtle and not so subtle effects to make you feel like you're actually exploring shark infested underwater wrecks or futuristic laboratories with noticeably archaic pain giving tools. With VR, there's always a trade off from fidelity to presence and Rhombus actually handles it really, really well. As a package, this is actually done quite well and I really do like the overall feel. Sound, music, and voice. See something, it's a strange room. Look around for clues, Rasputin. If we can figure out where this room is, we can fly the jet straight there. But first, tell me if my dad's okay. On it. You're flying so high over cities of gold. But in your mind's eye, something evil takes hold. A stranger, you whisper a name, dive into danger like a moth to the flame. Put one of these here. And of course, sound is up first and it's excellent. When you're in VR, the way the spatial surround effects work is actually really stunning. There's a great attention to detail and environmental sounds, which really solidify the atmosphere. When you're five fathoms down, the watery gurgle that you hear and that slight muffled movement sound in the distance works incredibly well. Now, sadly though, some of this falls away when performing puzzles, especially across different mediums, where the game just switches to a, you're actually over there sound sphere when you're absolutely not. This can result in falling away sound effects where the sound effects sort of go away and everything sounds completely normal like it was recorded in a normal room versus anything ambient and that's usually just for solving some of the puzzles now it works for gameplay but it's noticeable when it transitions i'd say as a package it's still pretty good music first of all that theme song holy shit double fine hit the nail on the head for the i'm a freaky kid version of james bond vibe perfectly with an excellently overdone but still typically psychonauts opening credit scene fantastic vocals that sound completely normal until you actually listen more closely to what's being said and that's both at the starting and in the ending credits now while in the normal game proper there's almost no music which is obvious as an audio decision and is based on keeping gamer presence high and removing that movie score feeling while playing and letting the environment sort of create their own music whether diegetic or non-diegetic it works well with little ditties played when specific situations occur but otherwise held to cutscenes and more poignant moments now the choice of wood instruments and 1970s styled bond guitar strums 
reflect the dark overall situation that the characters and the world find themselves in and fits the mood perfectly. While I loved what was there, some locations though did feel noticeably thin in audio and I would have loved just a tiny bit of ambiance in some of those locations. And of course that brings us to voice. Now everyone from Richard Horvitz to Nikki Rapp returned to the fold here as the main title characters and do a wonderful job detailing out the quirky world and the circumstances that the characters are going to find themselves in. Sometimes, especially when dealing with a different medium, you can sometimes hear that confusion or change in the voice actor's delivery, like they know they're in VR versus a normal game. But here, the switch from platformer to VR is done incredibly well, from maniacal doctors with a reason to Raz himself. Really, really well done voice work. Gameplay. But first, a little bit about story. This is basically like a friggin' SEAL team led by a psychic Joey from Friends. It doesn't end well. You play as Raz and his friends who are returning home from the original game. You're then informed a member of the team's family has been kidnapped and one botched rescue later, and it's your job to save your team from themselves, as well as the original person you actually came to rescue. You jump into action, and that's pretty much the beginning. Now, Rhombus of Ruin takes on a first and sometimes third person adventure game puzzle mix. The game is mostly played with you jumping from character's mind to character's mind to fulfill quest elements and puzzles for that specific person, all of whom, of course, are in mental dire straits due to the situation at hand and what's occurred. Because, let's be honest, there's really nothing you want to do more than leap into the cortex of a character that can only be loosely described as Ichabod Crane plus Jack from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, you go around, you solve puzzles, you do the typical combination of smarts, telepathy, and of course pyrokinesis as you press, pull, push, shove, burn, break, leverage, and levitate your way through the game. Now, for many fans of the original, there is an almost mystic feeling to the structure and overall presentation in the original that certainly elevated above what we saw sometimes from scores. Rhombus doubles up on that presentation with a magnificent job fitting the title into the VR format. First of all, as Rez and the other characters, the developers have found a fairly eloquent way of hiding the teleport function of VR into the story proper, jumping into people's minds like the original, but here it's set up in an almost point-and-click adventure using them as platforming elements to get to unique places or unique location points. Whether it's jumping into a concert goer's headspace to try to see if you can get a better vantage point for a concert sabotage or leaping from jellyfish to pufferfish in an underwater exploration of deep sea mysteries. It works incredibly well, for the most part. You see, one issue here is the game brands itself is pretty much a seated VR title. Well, sure, that's right if you're a friggin' owl, because no matter what character you jump into, there's countless times where you have to turn more than just your head to see a character you want to jump to or a location you want to see. We aren't talking 45 degrees. We're talking neck craning, I need a chiropractor, oh shit, something just popped in my spine moment. That combined with a great deal of staring straight up in boss battles or the occasionally odd vantage point in some puzzles results in a good deal of strain even for the short time the title story takes. It's just an odd design element that they put into this. When you look at many VR games, for example, Resident Evil, which is contained within the normal horizontal patterns of prior titles, but keeps the occasional head craning just to a minimum, Rhombus sometimes delights in it, twisting and turning, and their twisted art and level design aesthetic can actually find itself quickly wearing thin in those locations. Plain and simple, play this while standing, you will enjoy it a ton more. Now while you're leaping through other people's corrupted decision factories, you will occasionally have to solve puzzles. And while somewhat easy, I have to admit their setup in VR works really, really well. Like peeking at a clipboard to see a series of symbols needed for an unlock, or finding out that a wayward worker who appears to be studying hard might just be hiding something behind his textbook of giant size plus one. It's fantastic stuff, and it really does add to the sense of being there and not just a game that was shoved into VR. Sadly, a major problem with this game is its length, which is less than two hours. And if you're good at puzzles, much less than that. One puzzle, well, puzzled me and it took me 20 minutes to complete versus the five it took another player, which means you're talking south of two hours for most gamers unless one particular thing puzzles them. Add to that the fairly heavy use of confined environments when it comes to just sheer exploration or things to investigate and interact with, and you have an incredibly short experience that really isn't wide or deep. Luckily, of course, these characters have various psychic abilities, and it can be fun to brain toast someone's pillows or heat up a bad guy's dive suit. But the roughly one-for-one -one interactions there means that if it's not there for someone to solve a puzzle with, it can appear like it's not there for any reason whatsoever. And of course, this brings us to Fun Factor. And yeah, for the time I played, I had a blast from start to finish. Now, it's noticeably lean, but I love the environments and the story, and my hat's off to the developers for their handling of some heavy material in the later game, but that's not something these guys aren't known for. I did get stuck on one puzzle, but that's because I thought something was a hint and it actually wasn't. From that point on, it's actually pretty straightforward. If, of course, you consider straightforward having a squad of number 11s from Stranger Things losing their goddamn minds. 
Now, if Rhombus of Ruin is anything, it's actually just excellent, if short-lived, fan service. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. Well, very enjoyable. It's also very enjoyable for an insane amount of time. The game's length is just criminal. While most likely with a price elevated to offset VR development, that price shouldn't be meted out onto consumers when in combination with such a short experience with no replayability basically at all. It's not a bad game. In fact, it's an excellent title, but that excellence is experienced in such short fashion as to leave gamers sitting there wanting to take a page from one of the characters in the game and simply burn everything down. Honestly, if this was four to six hours, it would be a phenomenal title, very much so, but right now the price does not equal the length that you're getting. So as always, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon. Patreon is, of course, how I continue to bring you these videos that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Or if you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.